what's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video. And today we're taking a look at screen brightness. So if you are a student like me or you've been really anywhere out in public seeing other people using their computers, usually you'll see their screens being super, super dim. But the question is, how much battery life are you actually gaining from dimming your screen all the way down to almost 0%? And is it worth straining your eye for that type of savings? So today, well, we're gonna test exactly that and a few other different scenarios to give you an idea of how much power that these screens actually using. So in most modern computers these days, the CPU processors and all the sort of traditionally high performance parts actually don't draw a whole lot of power. In fact, most modern CPUs can run at less than 5 watts of power draw and most modern GPUs inside of laptops don't even run at all when the computer's idling or doing basic tasks, saving you a lot of power. So most of the power draw of your computer is actually done through the screen of the system. So how much does it draw and is there that much of a saving that can be had? So for today's testing, I not only tested, well, max versus minimum brightness, which is what the title says down there, but also to everything else in between to really get an idea of how much this panel is using. Now for testing today, I use this guy, the Dell XPS 15 9550, so it is a little bit older generation, but still valid nevertheless. I also do set the computer to airplane mode, closed off everything else that may be drawing power, and went ahead and ran my numbers. Now I use battery bar version 3.6.6 to go ahead and actually measure the power drawn, because it actually has a handy little watt current usage which was really nice to go ahead and measure the actual settings that I was using and we can go ahead and take a look at our first round of numbers. Now in my numbers I measured 0%, 25%, 50%, 75% and 100% brightness. The reason why I measured these different variants is because that's the built-in settings that Windows has on the system. So went ahead and tested exactly them. So let's jump into our first rounds of tests. At 0% brightness we we're using about 7 to 8 watts of power. Jumping up to 25 we we're running at around 8 watts of power almost bang on with no fluctuation. 50% we're running about 9.5 watts of power being drawn and at 75% we're running 10.5 watts and obviously at 100% we're drawing the most at around 11.9 to 12 watts of power drawn. Now, in just the grand scheme of things, that's actually not much power being drawn. I do still know a lot of laptops even being sold today that draw 12 to 13 watts of power even when they're idling on the lowest battery source. So that just shows the XPS 15 is actually a fairly power sipping little device. Nevertheless, let's crunch some numbers and figure out how much power that's actually using. So the XPS 15 9590 has an 85 watt battery. However, mine's a little bit of an older system and can only hold around 65 watts of charge, but for today, Today's ease of mathematics and easy to port over to your computers at home will just say that that battery can actually hold 85 watts of power. So if we crunch all the numbers, converting the 10 watts of power, dividing and all that kind of stuff, this is the kind of graph that we are taking a look at. And well, it's actually pretty surprising. If we set our brightness to 0% within the windows, we'll be looking at around 12 hours of runtime versus if we throw it up to 100%, we would be looking at around seven hours of runtime. That's about a five hour difference between minimum and maximum brightness. But before we do get in further, that's not exactly the whole story. Sure, there's quite a bit of power being used. That's a five watt difference and a five hour difference in terms of actual running time. But that isn't a test that all of us would be using. No one sits at their computer, changing the brightness and having nothing else running on the system in power saver mode with airplane mode on and all that kind of stuff. It's not a very realistic test to go ahead and do. So I reran all the tests in a more realistic fashion. I went ahead and opened up things like Google Chrome with a bunch of tabs open. I went ahead and played a YouTube video inside of that Chrome tab. I opened up a bunch of Word documents, IntelliJ, brackets, and a whole bunch of other stuff to go ahead and simulate what I would do on a computer and what most people would do in sort of an office type of business type of situation. Obviously when gaming, things are definitely gonna be up in the air, but for a more office and realistic type of situation, let's rerun these tests. And in doing so, we found these numbers right here. At 0%, we we're running at 16 watts of power drawn. At 25%, we we're running at 19.5. 50 was 20 watts, 75 was 23 watts, and 100% brightness was 25 watts. Definitely the more brightness we threw the screen and actually surprisingly enough, well, not much changed too much in the wattage. We went from 0% to 25% with about a three to four watt difference up to our 75 to 100% with about a two watt difference. And that was kind of just an interesting thing to check out there. Once again, if we do crunch our numbers, we're gonna find this table right here, which shows us a more realistic runtime of the computer. Honestly, I would love it if this system would run for 12 hours straight, 
but unfortunately, even when brand new, it never actually ran for that long. So obviously things do run up and take up some power. So these numbers right here are a little bit more realistic. However, seven hours of runtime at 0% whilst is cool probably isn't going to happen as things do fluctuate with power. But when you do get up to that 100% and that three and a half to 3.4 hours of runtime, definitely seems fairly realistic here. And in the real world situation, the difference between maximum brightness and minimum brightness was about 3.6 hours or about nine watts of difference. Now you may notice the wattage is actually different on this more realistic test, mainly because there's actually other things going on with the system, so there is a few more variables. However, with that being said, it is fairly close and does give a good idea of how much of a difference your screen brightness actually makes. So cool, we've gotten to this point, we've figured out, well, actually, yeah, the screen makes this much amount of impact, which is about three and a half hours on an average system. So what exactly should I do about it? Honestly, I would go ahead and do a mixture of the two different things. Number one, I'd set my personal brightness to about 25% charge, as that gave us fairly decent brightness and being able to see the screen, but also to still having enough charge left over to run for a fair amount of time. I would then go ahead and close off everything I don't need on the system, so we're not drawing any extra power, and that should give us the best sort of battery life to screen brightness ratio. At the end of the day, there is a fair big difference between the actual brightness, and when it comes to actual real world testing, you could almost double your battery life by just turning down the screen brightness. However, with that being said, every computer screen is ever so slightly different, so to be drawing a little bit more or a little bit less power, and also to keep in mind the internals of your system will be different. New computers will definitely be more power efficient, so these numbers will vary just a little bit, and do keep in mind, I only tested the XPS 50 in this video, so if you want a bigger sample size, maybe let me know what your results are down in that comment section. Grab yourself battery bar and uh, run these exact tests and see what you get on your particular system. I'll be really interested to see what other systems do get, but honestly, you could probably get a fair bit of extra time by just turning down your system brightness, and honestly, I wasn't exactly expecting this much of a battery life increase. I did think we'd get a couple hours, but getting 3.6 hours on an average kind of charge is not half that bad. But otherwise, once again, guys, let me know what you think down in that comment section. Also, too, if you've run these type of tests, let me know what your results are down in that comment section. Otherwise, guys, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.